<laughs> or maybe it's the light. Look, I put the uh, lip gloss. Yeah, I know. Oh, fancy. I should put mascara. Yeah. Are we going to talk about my gray hair? Up to you. We'll see if it comes up. <laughs> oh, my God. Have you seen her gray hair? Check out the stripe. <laughs> I think now you can talk about it. <laughs> oh. Are we going to redo oh. all that? Ready? Okay, well, let's try to recreate that. It's so <laughs> good. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Hi. Oh, I'm so <laughs> pissed off. Okay. Oh, I really thank God you wearing. noticed. I'm Can you imagine, imagine if we done oh the my whole God. thing? That would have been a first. Oh. And you know, I've heard other people say that on podcasts, and I've been like, how could you even let that happen? Oh, like, my God. Happen? Here it happens to us. Oh. Welcome to As Fastly Goes podcast number 19. I'm Lisa. And I'm Melissa. And here we are on a Monday afternoon. Yes, and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Great. weather has finally come to Montreal. Yep, we're so excited and uh, nice and bright and shiny. And uh, we're a little bit, oh, what did you say last time? He's punchy. Like, a little bit punchy. Uh, I had a little bit of a late night last night. Lisa was up till 6 o'clock this morning working on a new design, which is <laughs> admirable but six o'clock thank you thank you thank you six o'clock I, I have this like stick to itiveness you know like i just gotta get it done gotta get it done now this is what we do for you guys because <laughs> we had um talked about recording this podcast yeah. right and we had nothing to show we had for it. Committed. Yeah. And then Lisa's like, I got nothing new. And I was like, I don't have anything new either. And then he's just sort of whipping out a, a little design. A little design. And so then I but was like, course, you know, but then she had to finish it. She yeah. can't just show it partially done. She had to stay up until done. 10 to 6 10 to 6 morning. in the morning. And uh, it was funny because uh, I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to finish between 3 and 4. Yeah. That was my estimation. But then I did my bind off and halfway through, I'm like, oh, it's a little too loose. Mm. So I'm going to like start it over again. And I would have like, gone to bed yeah and done you sure i don't know that's what you say but i don't believe you you don't no i don't believe you i think if it was something you were like really like dead set on getting it off your needles you would have done that hmm. but maybe you would have started earlier i only started what time did you start knitting last i started thing? knitting at quarter 11. okay so you probably maybe would have started earlier Maybe. So you can't do everything with knitting. That's the problem. Because no. I went out for dinner with my family. Yeah. So it's like, do you go out for dinner? Do you read? Do you well, take see, a walk? I, have, I was working do do? on something too. And I thought for sure I would have it done. I started on yeah. Friday. I thought for sure I'd have it done. for. But, you know, Johannes and I are eating our way up and down. <laughs> it's been so so nice. We're eating every restaurant to us. And we're having cocktails. And let's go out. Let's go out again. Yeah. You want to go out again? You want to go for tapas? You want to go for a It's Monday night. It's Sunday night. It's Tuesday night. Exactly. It's uh, Mother's Day. <laughs> it's uh <laughs> it's a new start of the week exactly. day. Exactly. So I didn't I did not make nearly as much progress as I thought I yeah. would, but that did not make me stay up till 10 to no, 6. No, cuz you morning. yeah, I don't know. I just I don't know. I had it in me. Also, it's cuz it's a new design and Françoise is actually knitting up uh, an, a sample a like a, te- a version of it, so I kind of wanted to yeah. get it done so I could pass it on to her. So anyways, yada yada yada. No, she wanted to have something to show you guys. I did. Today. I did. I felt you like did. I I have I I would have nothing in my hand. I mean, I didn't sew in my hands. But I did steam block it. We'll camouflage that. Yeah. So just as I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm like, oh, I should really steam block it. Yeah. So uh, this morning when Sean came and I said, Sean, you got to make sure you wake me up at 8.30 in the yeah. morning. So he wakes me up. He's like, so you had a little date with the iron last <laughs> night. I'm like, he goes, what time you go to bed? I'm like, don't You don't want to know. You don't want to know. know. <laughs> we'll discuss later. <laughs> so yeah. So if I, you see, if I seem a little bit like, you know, a little spacey, a little of it, but I did put some yeah, lip, you did some, put some lip gloss yeah, on today. Yeah, I did. Give me a little bit Kicking of Kicking and screaming into her 50s with some makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling Melissa, I might put some mascara on next time. Wow. Yeah? Shock Wait everybody. For it, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, uh, and then we met with Kathy this morning. Yeah. And, you know, Kathy is was one of the first reps we met with I way know. back um, and when we opened. And uh, it was really nice to meet with her. And like you, you were saying, Melissa, it's really, you know, it takes a lot of energy for us when, yeah. we, uh, when we meet. Um, well, yeah. Like I was saying the first time we recorded our intro, you mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> this, is a, <laughs> this is the second time we recorded such a great oh, 50 minute so interview good. So good. and only only yeah only after you know what 10 15 minutes did we realize uh, that we were not recording and at you all. know it's like we were kind of being giddy and because we were so kind of yes. tired and giddy that it was just kind of really you know, we, we had we had repartee <laughs> We were having to shake it. We were trying to recreate it, but it'll never be what it was. And then we were like, oh, (laughs) Mamma Mia. Yeah, anyway, so we met with Kathy, and it was, uh, you know, meeting with reps is always hard because there's just so many decisions to be made, and you Mm. really, really have to have sugar when you're doing it. Your (laughs) brain needs glucose to make all those decisions, and we didn't have any. No, like, you think we would figure that out by now. I know. Seriously, but we were getting dead by the end, and Kathy was really patient with us. I mean, what's really nice about our reps is that they sort of understand us and how we work. And And they even know what to bring. Yeah, it's like she brought so many... They don't bring any acrylics. Acrylic, and they don't bring any plastic buttons. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's 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 gotten easier yeah. now yeah. because they're tailoring it and very patient with us, yeah. you know. So, and I was really proud of ourselves. I think we we yeah. ordered like a new something new, which is fun. Yes. But like you said, we didn't fall down that hole. We didn't fall down the oh, oh this is new. Try let's this. try this or yeah. let's try that. I mean, we are bringing in lots of beautiful new things yeah. for the fall. However, I think that we have really discussed our vision. Yeah. for this fall and yeah. I you know we've we, we've been talking and, and we feel like we're maturing yes. as knitters and business women it's and really we, wise yeah sash. well at the beginning it was just it was all new it was all beautiful oh. it was all yeah. attractive and we wanted to do it all and and, and be everything and for all, everybody too right? remember like yeah. everything for everybody and now I think that we do still want to have something yeah. for everybody but in a really curated way yeah, right. because we notice that the things that we really believe in and get behind is what other people get behind because people come here because of what we create. Right. So if we're bringing things in that are not quite responding to what our beliefs are or but what we just our vision think, is. Oh, that might sell or people might yeah. like that or that might cater to a particular group that mm. even though we don't feel that in tune with, we'll bring it in. But then it doesn't really no. do that well for us no. because we don't really get behind it. So I think we're really letting go of, yeah, of that all idea. those lines that we're not really passionate about. And um, also at first, you know, it was like, oh, to liquidate something or to put on sale really broke our heart because we're yeah. like, oh, all that money out the window, you know. But yeah. now we realize that it's like, you know, it's you time need to real estate. We, yeah. we don't have a huge store no. and we just need to create the space. To and sometimes in. like stuff too, like letting go of things we've that we've, you know, qui nous tient à cœur, that we've yeah. had since we opened the store and we have nice relationships with those companies. And, and then and just, having just to... like, it's time to move to something. Doesn't mean we won't come back to it, right? Yeah. But it's like, it, there, there has to be a it has to be something fresh, yeah. Yeah, and so we, uh, what helped us was on Thursday we met with mm-hmm. Francoise, and in our mind's eye we mm-hmm. went through all of our yarns, yeah, and we really created a vision. Like we wrote yeah. down sort of what is our like kind of mission statement in yeah, a little way, way. very, yeah. very you know, going forward. What is it that we want? Where are we going? What do we believe in? What's our philosophy? And then from there, going through yarns, and we made this our, our table exactly. of like, you know, what we need to do samples for, what we need to let go of, what we mm-hmm. need to put on sale. So that, I think, was a good exercise just Very before good. meeting Very with all the reps. Very good starting to meet with our reps for the fall. And I mean, yeah. a, lot of the, a lot of yarns, but I think we even made decisions about when we were at um, Edinburgh, Edinburgh Yarn yeah. Festival and H&H and, H&H and deciding yeah. what we really wanted to, to bring in. So we kind of in in some ways we've pre we, we pre-planned and yeah. now we're just filling in gaps yeah right yeah so it's good I, I really felt good and you know sometimes too when you're with with uh, meeting with reps you feel badly you're like oh you know Not you want to order more much. things yeah. and so now now it's really it's amazing like I think yeah. we're becoming really we're being solid okay with that yeah we're being okay with that yeah sort of solid and I less mean, people pleasing and more yes what's right for us in our business and we also talked about that aspect in terms of so that's like the yarns and you know at first it was like Melissa said you know we wanted everything and we couldn't get enough but also as business women and sort of seeing that our business is a viable one now yeah whereas when we started doing this for real it's eight years and uh and we're and so I think we own a Mm. business now yes yeah we're business it's funny to say like I well I think because for for since the beginning it was always it was a bit of a lark and we did it and we thought well we'll do it as long as it works yeah right and who knows if it's going to work or not work or how long we were always prepared for it not to work yeah I think that's yeah you're right right? even though we worked hard and we it was like we did it as if it was like for real yeah I think there was this sense that uh it's it's still fleeting right and then just when then when we were really about to let go 
we we're like, oh, no, let's give it, let's push it, let let's push it and see what we where we can take it. And that that really, thank God we did, yeah, yeah. because it really brought us to, yeah, we have all our business mojo back. Yeah, right? it's really, really, it's yeah. something. It's like that idea of like sticking to something, and then just when you think it's like, it's it's even though it was doing yeah. well, it was like how much more effort for it to go to that step where we could say it's a viable business. We're living off our business. We're business women. Yeah. And then it's like we had to get over that hump. And thank God we stayed. Yeah. Thank God we got over that hump. Yeah. High five us. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so uh, so that was uh, so that was great. And now to be in this place yeah. where I feel like oh oh like I you know it was really nice coming in on the weekend. I came in with my with my mother and my sister in law, and they were just you know we had there were people working and and you know of course we don't come in that much no. on the weekends anymore so we just you know we just kind of came in and shopped and left and my sister-in-law was just like wow it's just so great that you can go <laughs> go in when you want and leave when you want and you're not you know there are certain businesses that mm. are really really hard being a restaurant owner oh, is hard. Yeah. Being a, and, and starting a retail enterprise off is hard we lived yeah. here right oh, we yeah. lived here mm -hmm. and and we still are completely connected to our business, but we don't have to live here anymore. No. And I think it it has allowed us to become really passionate about it again. It, it is, and, right? and to move into more creative space to hold mm -hmm. a bigger vision, because what happens is that if you're still in the day-to-day, -day, yeah. you can't see really how to grow your business. The trees, right? You're, yeah. just, you're just doing what you always do. So because we have an amazing staff and yeah. an amazing leadership team with Francoise and Chloe, yeah. we can really say, okay, our business is being taken care of, where do we want to go? Where and, it, yeah. and you need to have that creative space. You need to have time and energy. And I think it's so nice to be able to afford to do yeah. that right now, yeah. you know? So um, it's it's great. And, you know, um, it's interesting because, you know, the book by Malcolm Gladwell where he talks mm -hmm. about the 10,000 hours, you know, yeah. to be... Mastery. Uh, mastering. Mastering yeah. something. Well, we've and, done our 10,000, yeah, right? I think so. <laughs> and it's true. It's like when you stay... And you, you stick with something. And you, you become the expert. Yeah. Right? So it, it's really a nice place to yeah. be as yeah. we approach our 50s. As we approach our 50s. <laughs> not this year. No, not this year. Next year. Next year. That's it. I always We're going to have a big party, oh, right? Oh, we should. That should be like, yeah. Right? I, why not? Like a... An espacio kind of. Let's have a huge party. Celebrate women. Are we going to shake on that one? There we go. <laughs> now you guys know our uh, strategy. <laughs> yes, exactly. But it won't be 50% off. Everybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> for five minutes, no, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Oh. We're going to do a flash 50% off for 50 minutes somewhere in the middle of the day. No, that would make real good business women out of us. Okay, so, we should talk okay, some knitting. So move on to some knitting now. Yeah. So uh, maybe we'll talk about what we're wearing. Okay. Do you, uh, first, Do you want to uh, go first? For or? my uh, my beautiful original shawl. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wonder if you can guess what it is I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> However, it was could not. It be? Could it be a simple luxury? Mm. Mm. In a different yarn. In a different yarn. Knit this is actually purse. the rustic. This is eco wool, cascade eco wool. Yeah. In, I, the, in their, um, they had a line that was a marled. Yes, a marled line. And yeah. so um, my, uh, and this was knit by my son. So uh, some of you might have go heard. John Luca. <laughs> go, 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 John go, John Luca. Go, John Luca. Go, So go. Uh, we, uh, my son's school has a fair every yeah. year where all the kids in the school, every class knit, that uh, doesn't knit, <laughs> every class creates yeah, something. Yeah. And so they do all kinds of like, one class does like wrapping paper and then they made cushions out of recycled fabrics mm -hmm. and uh, another one did bird feeders. Anyway, didn't Francoise's class, they did earrings and yes. pom-poms? They pom -pom did little pom-pom earrings. Pom -pom they earrings. Were so cute. They're so cute. Yeah. And also little um, uh, démaquillant uh, makeup remover. Oh, from the cotton? Yes. The Bernat cotton. And they all sold out like right away. They knit away. them or crochet them? Knit, or? They knit okay. them. So, uh, so Francoise's class always does knitting or crochet and so does uh, so does uh, Gianluca's class. So um, anyway, so my class had a... We have three mothers who are pretty uh, involved and artistic yeah. in the in his class. So one mother is a jewelry designer. Mm -hmm. Her name is Anne-Marie Chagnon. She's actually quite a famous Quebec uh, jewelry designer. And um, so she comes in, she brings all her leftover pieces from her collections. Mm -hmm. And the kids like assemble and they make, she talks a little bit about putting things together. Okay. And they make bracelets, uh, necklaces, and earrings. And these ones, right? Yes. So I, my son made these earrings. So, so he's into this like two colored socks, two different shoes. So. You would have been great in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Mrs. Era. so I have a gold and a silver 
Uh, they're uh, so nice. Yeah, they're cute. They are cute. I was pretty proud I'm of them. I'm not used to seeing you in dangly earrings, but I they know. look good on you. I think I look good. Yeah. It's a whole new meme of us. It's a whole, it's a whole new, new care of John Luca. <laughs> <laughs> Consult your son more yeah, often. I should. <laughs> so uh, one of the projects that I guided the kids in was uh, with the eco wool is yeah. to knit uh, the simple luxury shawl. And we also did some cowls. We did the wham mm-hmm. bam thank you lamb. And we did yeah. some fingerless mitts. And um, so, uh, yeah, so my son knit this and then I, and I bought it. And I said, it's <laughs> hilarious. So... We donated the wool. <laughs> I taught the, the kids how to it. knit. I washed all the knits. Some of them that needed some like fixing holes and all that, I fixed yeah. it. And then you I bought, bought it. it. So I'm supporting <laughs> your school. That's what moms do. Exactly. So, uh, and it's pretty fun. My son is pretty proud when uh, when I wear. Last year was hats. Mm-hmm. So I have uh, hats that he made. And all the kids were excited. We sold mm-hmm. all the knits. Um, and what's really nice, too, is that with the class, we have the, every class has a discussion about what to sell the objects yeah. at. So the whole idea of, like, what does the raw cost? What is the time and effort? And that we put into it and what can the market bear so right. that's really a whole a education lesson, yeah. it is a whole a good uh, lesson well, tell it. me about this one a little bit uh it's eco wool it's eco wool one, one skein one skein do you know what size and, needle uh, I, my son he's a tight knitter i gave him a he took a size 10 10 not millimeter 10 millimeter okay. so what i did with the kids was he's they a all tight knitter yeah so i take apples after his not mom. falling far <laughs> from the tree there <laughs> and i love the colors so yeah. uh we uh, we had like yellow and orange and purple yeah. and green so um Anyways, yeah. Very good. So that's what I'm wearing. Okay. Well, I'm knitting the Knit and Slide. This is a Stephen West pattern. And it's one I knit a couple years. I think it's two years ago now. That long and already? Yeah. Really? Still, yeah. Wow. I You're think still, it's two years. Wasn't just last year? Oh, I think so. Definitely. I think last year it was the Fade the uh, yes. Andrew Mowry one yes, I did. Yes, yes, anyway, this one is uh, it's one that's really fun. Um, I used Hedgehog in Boombox. And okay, well, this we're supposed to hold it. Oh, longer. I'm sorry. We got yes, a comment. yes, we got comment about not holding our yarns Things up long too. enough. Okay, so this is the Hedgehog Fibers and Boombox. It's the single place, the skinny singles, and I used Antler in Madeline Tosh Light, and I also used. I actually used Composition Book Gray in Madeline Tosh Light, but we don't have any of that l- left. I. Think I didn't really check our system. Turn. I didn't see it on the shelf, but it's I very took similar. Turn. It's very to similar, turn. exactly. Mm. So that's turn. And then for the edging, I used a unicorn tail, Madeline Tosh light unicorn tail in the uh, pop rocks. I think it mm-hmm. was called. I think that's yeah. just discontinued, discontinued. Actually, yeah. so I think this one would be nice. This is um, coquette de in the. And you also fun. use the kid silk lace. The um, in oh boom yeah. Box. I the, did. The, yes. Not. Uh, is that no? What is it called? Kids silk. No, it's, it's the, the hedgehog. Uh, the hedgehog. So, hedgehog. Kid silk. Kids. Kids. Uh. Kid lace or kid, something. Kid lace. The mohair. The mohair. The mohair from hedgehog. Now, thank you for reminding yes. me that. Did I just use that? You, I I oh, checked yes, already, here. and you used boombox. Yeah. So. Yeah, I forgot about that. I mean, I'm like Melissa's Come not on. gonna forget. Isn't that crazy? Isn't it so? This is so Stephen West. I love it. It's, of course, you guys, totally out of my comfort zone, what possessed me to knit this and in these colors. But I put it on today. I, You know, it's one of those things that I, I knit and I put it up in the store and then I, I was like, I could never wear that. But this morning I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm just, I'm feeling I must it. be feeling really springy and you summery are. because I was like, oh, I'm actually feeling this. I'm going to wear it. Good. I might even take it in home. In 24 degree weather. Yeah. Yeah, because wool breathes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that it's not that warm well no but it's gonna go to 24 i know but it's not like it's 38 because no, it's humidity. wool it's, it's wool look i'm wearing wool too exactly. on uh, 30 You're one to talk. i'm wearing a merino bra also <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say in the spring <laughs> She, might, she likes talking about her merino bra. I tell you, they're can. amazing. <laughs> icebreaker, icebreaker. No, but you I know think you mentioned that in the last I think podcast I too. <laughs> Who Maybe knew? next time you should just show it, Lise. <laughs> you should just bring one. <laughs> or flash them. But you know, a knitter can truly appreciate the properties of wool, right? Yeah, so why not? Know. I mean, I haven't gone to the underwear, but you know, the, the bra. Well, maybe not. Why not? You know? Why not? Okay. Moving right along. All right. Yes, I so. think we should. <laughs> We're your... punch drunk, boys. Okay, you can talk about your new design? 
Or should I do the hipster first or the new Oh, yeah. Do, no, talk about your hipster. Cause well, so this we can, is we can do that one quickly. Yeah, because this is obviously same, same, no different than what Melissa knit. Yeah. So I have to say, I really like it. It's I re- so good, right? Yeah. I, and I really like these little tassels. I the, know. It, I, I feel that it really is hipster. It is hipster. There's, like, it's the name is fantastic. Yeah. So and this was quick. It was quick. And, you know, this is done in the mustard colorway. And unfortunately, oh, we didn't we say don't... Mayak. Mayak medium. Mayak medium. Which we have, we have loads of in stock. Unfortunately, this color is out for the year. Till the fall. Yeah. So we weren't able to get any more of this right now. Mm. But I've seen so many gorgeous versions in um, like that. What was the the, the rosy one? (laughs) I want to call it Desert Rose, but it's Night Flower. Night Flower. And also there's a green. Oh, yeah. Kind of like a... yeah. Shoot. Not an army green, but no, no, I, I forget. Like a the foresty name. green. Yeah. Anyway, there are amazing colors and black. I really black. Oh yeah. I need to do one in black. I think for maybe the, I think in the for fall. The fall. Yeah. And it's like such a. It is a fast knit. Like this is kind of an instant gratification. And I feel like end. I feel like we're freaking all our 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 viewers out who are used to seeing us in neutrals. There's, I know. Look at all this. I know. It's right. all color and. Don't worry. Well, it's don't just worry. a phase. No, but you know what I have to say? In yeah. the summer, I like color. Like, yeah. you do a lot of white linens and, yes. like, pale grays and beige linen. And I do a little... Yeah. I do black. some coral. Yeah, I'm black. And I do coral and I like yeah, some pink. So, I like my nice little summer dresses. Yeah. And in the winter, we just go back we to... We go back to our gray thing. and brown and black and navy. That. So, that's... I finished that. And then... Okay. okay should I do my... Yeah, sure. My thing? Okay, so this is my new design. It does not have a name yet. So, um... So it is a triangle shawl, and it has, it's basically stockinette, but every three stitches, every so many rows, there's a purl stitch to give it this little texture. So, so pretty. So it's done in the Mayak cashmere, which we don't carry. Uh, we have it for the hat kits, and it's a very limited edition. Hold it up, please, from end to end so people yeah. get the full... So it's not, hasn't been, um, it's only been steam blocked. I, I like to block on wires to really maximize the length. And they've got a garter edge on there. Yeah. So um, I'm going to, Francoise is knitting, whoops, I'm sorry, I moved the, the camera there. Francoise is knitting it up for us in um, Julie Asselin Fino mm-hmm. because it's basically a shawl done in a fingering weight yarn. And I happen to just have cashmere just hanging happen around. To have just stash. It was like one color that we thought we were going to use for the hat yeah, kits that we didn't. And it was just sitting there in a little basket. I'm like, oh, poor little cashmere. I think I'm going to take it home with me. <laughs> so I knit myself this beautiful uh, uh, shawl. Yeah. And I'm going to write up the pattern. And it's like, it's a triangle. It is not a parallelogram. Imagine. Big departure. It's and a perfect size for wearing yeah, just like this, actually. Yeah. It's yeah. a nice little, um, it could be indoor in the winter or outdoor in the spring, summer. So um, I'm going to write that pattern up and I'm also toying with the idea of, of charting it so I've never done a chart but I find that this pattern lends itself well to doing little simple charts and I think it would be really good because if you notice here the the pattern it starts like the the purl stitches are closer together and as you go down it um they go a little further apart and then a little further apart not by huge but two row by two row um increases increases so um increments I guess increments, you could say yeah. so um so I thought a chart would be good. Like if people are kind of a scared of a chart, mm-hmm. kind of a scared, kind of scared of charts, <laughs> <Scared> of chart. <laughs> and I've never done a chart before. I said, oh, maybe I could chart it for them. So yeah. it could be a nice gateway into uh, charting. To charts. <laughs> and also for, for me too, as a designer, to uh, <laughs> learn how to use charts. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that's true. Yeah. The inverted commas are yeah. <laughs> blowing. So I, I'm toying with all kinds of different names right now, uh, be, but I uh, haven't quite named it yet. So yeah, I'm going to so, work on it. You, so what are you, you going to talk about your possibilities? Or? Yes. Well, the first... I think the fact that Lisa worked on this until 6 o'clock in the morning <laughs> should somehow figure in the name. Well, you know what? My first thing was like, oh, nuit blanche. Because in French, the expression nuit blanche is when you pull an all-nighter. Mm-hmm. So, and I really went to bed when the sun was up. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, I could call it Nuit Blanche. And then I was like, oh, I could say Into the Night. Yeah. Uh, but More there like a, Into the Morning. Into the Morning. Yes, yeah. maybe that's it. Um, my first idea was that there are little seeds. So I could do something with the word seeds or like in French, there are semence or, or germé or petit pois, mm-hmm. little peas. So I've got all these little ideas and uh, it hasn't quite stuck yet in terms okay. of what I want to call it. So I'll, maybe uh, after I sew in my ends and I block it tonight properly mm-hmm. with wires, 
I'll, uh, I'll be inspired. It'll come to you. Yeah, and Francoise is doing it in the brim. Let me go and see. Oh, yeah, have, uh, such a pretty color. Yeah. So, um, where's that color? I think we have one. Yes, we have one left. So we've we've already pre-ordered a whole bunch of this color from Julia Saint. It has a little bit of a mauvey tinge. It's like a mauvey gray. Yeah. So it's really uh, it's really beautiful, and it's 75% uh, merino, 15% cashmere, 10% silk. And this is uh, going to be a shawl that can be done in any fingering weight yarn. I did it on a 4 millimeter, mm -hmm. and I kept it so that almost every y fingering weight yarn, in terms of the yardage, you could use two in skeins. two skeins, yeah. So with two skeins, you'll be able to, to make this shawl. So, if you have so a it's a good stash buster. Yeah, thought, exactly. Right? So uh, I'm excited. It's kind of fun to do something different. Melissa and I seem to be on this roll, like one after another. So. So um, yeah, so as soon as uh, as soon as that p uh, pattern is published, we'll Instagram it and it on the next. By the, hopefully, it'll be up by the time the podcast goes. Oh, up, right? I think that yeah, that means I gotta hop to it and uh, well, write the pattern. Well, depends on if we're gonna wait until we get um, Francoise's Francoise to finish it up. In that yeah. Yarn. Okay, so, so maybe in, maybe in a, within a, a couple of weeks. Yeah, guess, exactly. Right? With, for sure, within okay. a couple of weeks, because Francoise, she's so cute. She started for me on the weekend, and nice. uh, <laughs> so yeah. that was good. So okay, yeah, and then so you, the next Benzie. one I have for which to talk about is one that we talked about on our last podcast when it was just in the beginning yeah, stages. Yeah, which I you think. weren't even sure where you were going. No, with it. I think I had just started the. Uh, I think maybe I was up to here. Yeah, or something, yeah, right? yeah, I believe so. And I wasn't sure how I was going to finish the outside of it but mm -hmm. this is uh i'm calling it the gateway to rustic because this one uses tuku wool fingering that's the um sort of brownie yellowish brown that i used for this and i've combined it with um hedgehog skinny singles which of course is a merino superwash hand dyed yarn and i thought it would be a great way of just bringing those two worlds together mm. worlds that don't often come together in the <laughs> same pattern right yeah and uh and so for people who are you know they're they they have a lot of this hand dyed merino in their stash and they they're they're you know, and they like that a bit of speckle but maybe don't want the whole, the whole thing, thing to be speckled yeah and they want to and they want to experiment with some some rustic yarns but don't want to you know maybe go full right full on it's a way of just it's just a way of introducing yourself to a rustic a more rustic yarn because rustic yarns are so i mean they have such a, a quality a unique quality to them in terms of their their loft and spin and uh texture yeah and it's such a juxtaposition to the the merino mm -hmm. singles that i just felt like it was a beautiful yeah it's, it's just so and, and also you know the what we're calling rustic yarns don't come in those speckly often no of course colors, they're usually so, solids right so not, this beautiful way to, yeah. to combine that and you know you you say gateway gateway to rustic but uh heidi uh kermeyer left a message and said it was a great gateway to color work as well yeah and somebody else said for somebody who was um a diehard knitter of, with rustic yarn said you know what this is a great gateway <laughs> to, to speckle. speckle for me or uh, you know to uh to um single ply yeah. hand dyed yarns so so I it's a gateway, gateway. Hand -dyed, yeah so it's, so it's a gateway either way and i you know hence the sort of uh, color work that looks uh, that's you know looks like a gate really yeah. uh, what I liked about this too was I I'm not an experienced color work knitter I've done I've done the sweater done I've done a couple of things but but always it was a little bit painful I was you know either trying to carry both yarns on on my right hand or dropping one and picking up the mm -hmm. other and because this is a very very repetitive two stitch two stitch pattern it really gave me the opportunity to just practice yeah. carrying my you know my my yarn in my mm -hmm. two hands and uh, by the end of it it felt really really mm. comfortable because it is just so repetitive and we so, talked about that choosing a yeah. smaller project yeah. and a new technique and just yeah. like bringing it to the end and that makes it yeah so great. and while I wouldn't have had any problem wearing I, either one of those yarns mm. against my neck and the tuku I will I will knit a sweater with mm. it's no problem to wear directly on the skin I I knew that that might be an issue for some so I decided to line mm. it with with the uh, shibui silk cloud and I mean it also gives it a beautiful pop of color and it's a pop of color a beautiful yeah. sensation on oh, your I neck know, it's so nice. extra warmth and yeah. also it's just so professionally finished like it's lined right so yeah you, even though it is beautiful to see color work so you can flip down and yeah it's just fun in the way and somebody else said oh well they would wear it yeah the, the other, other way. way right yeah why and not flip this down yeah why not so gateway to reversibility <laughs> 
<laughs> gateway keep to on. design, gateway keep to coming. Okay. And I have keeping. to tell you, the pattern is fabulously written. Like you oh, did a really nice. good job, Melissa. Like the I mean, pattern it's not is, a complicated pattern. No, but you were very detailed in how you explain everything, and you you put links for tutorials. Yep. For every new technique. Yeah. So there are a really few, there are a few techniques. It's a great skill builder yeah. project because it does require a provisional cast on, so that you can do a three needle bind off at the end and have that perfectly finished edge mm -hmm. at the bottom and at the top it's just a turning row you would uh, never know it was handmade <laughs> it's like i got it at holtz okay <laughs> <laughs> and then what was the other there was a provisional a three needle i feel like there was some other there uh, yeah there was oh another and then one. just color work i guess no, yeah, holding something else. holding your yarn yeah. and the two uh the provisional, provisional. I don't know, anyway there's good skills in this one, it's you guys. It's all written up in the pattern, and it's really accessible. Yeah, so really great. I did. So as a beginner, you're going to learn a lot of things, but it's the pattern really guides you. Yeah. So we do have some kits left in store. We had I had uh, prepared an initial batch, and they sold yeah, pretty right quickly. away. And then I prepared a second batch. Unfortunately, some of the colors that I had made the first batches with had either sold out mm. in the Silk Cloud or the Tuka Wool or whatever. So the next batch was uh, completely different. So I think we have... Is that the same as no, this I, one here? Is, no. No. Okay. So we've got these. As and an there are good pictures on the website. Yeah. So you can. And of course, the pattern includes the. the uh, sorry, the, the, kit. the kit includes the pattern, mm -hmm. as well as a skein of Tuku wool, a skein of Shibui silk cloud, both of which you'll use mostly up. And then what I did with the hedgehog skinny singles because you really only use about 24 25 grams in the pattern i divided the skeins into the 100 gram skeins into three so you have plenty but you don't have to purchase an entire skein and wind up having leftovers so. oh to pass yes i Very thought of nice. everything Very right nice. anyway so that pattern is free if you've got yarn in your stash and you just want to you just want to um use what you've got yep. then just go and go get the pattern it. gateway to rustic on ravelry and uh knock yourself in. <laughs> i can't wait to see people's version yeah, yeah. and this is that this is one that you're going to see so many different color combinations which is so be i so hope much people fun. like it knit it but yeah we'll see i'm sure they will there we go so that's it so that's uh it uh yep I think we're good. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to, we just want to talk about, we have a couple of new yeah. store samples that we've done. And um, Francoise uh, knit this up and she was great. She uh, texted me last night on my way home from the restaurant. She's like, oh, I just, are you podcasting? I, I have the sample. I'll bring it to your house. I said, well, I'm walking right by your house. So uh, mm -hmm. it was perfect timing. So this is the Mirage and it's knit in, the, it's a Shibui pattern and it's knit in um, the Shibui fern, which is 100% cotton. But what's really interesting is you have this little peekaboo silk yeah. cloud. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> you know, uh, we were, we we went back and forth which pattern to knit. Mm -hmm. And then I think we even started one and pulled it out. Yes. And then, and then we decided, because it's just so pretty. But it's so, it's so, so simple. Pretty. I mean, is this one Shelly Anderson, Lise? Uh, let me just double check. Yes, it is. The famous Shelly. Mm, she always says such classic simple yet yeah. classic designs her aesthetic is lovely and it's so, nice there's a little uh, and there's a split hem a split hem in the side yeah so this is just a so this is with the fern mm -hmm. with, did you already talk yep. about it yep so cloud where was i i don't know somewhere in the so this is their new um you were on cotton yarn things. for the for, for this the spring, season summer yeah mm -hmm. It's a fingering weight. And it's a very soft cotton. It's a very, like, sometimes you have cotton that are mercerized or that are more structured, but this is really, a, like, a nice, flexible, it's soft cotton. so soft. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So that's a new store sample that Francoise knit for us. Uh, double take tea. Here we go. Can that, is the mannequin uh, showing uh, tea? This is actually a pattern that Mona designed for us a couple of years ago now, yes. right? Yes, oh, quite a few, yeah. And uh, originally it was knit with the... Um, wrapped Merino by Habu. Right. And so, because we're not carrying that yarn anymore, we thought we would reinvent the pattern this yeah. year with the Elsbeth Levold Hempathy. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie just brought it in this morning, <laughs> hot right. off the needles. And uh, what's nice about this one is that it's perfectly reversible. It's just a front and a back that are knit exactly the same mm -hmm. way. I think we talked about it on our last podcast, so. at least. One of the, our podcasts. And so we thought this would, you know, we would go for something that was sort of reminiscent of Canada <laughs> so we went with it's not red and white but it is a nice beautiful rich red combined like a gray, with like an with ice it. it's a grayish beigey gray. right yeah, grayish so grayish there we go it's our thing grayish exactly so 
again, it's just two. And so you can just wear whatever color you want. Mm -hmm. Whatever mood you're in, right. that's what you wear on the and front. And here what you can do is, so... Um, you want to turn it again? Yeah, then? so Stephanie did the whole border in red. But mm -hmm. if, I don't know, could you do that? Or do you have to choose one color? I, I think, think you have so, to because right? you have to pick up yeah. and then... You can yeah. even do a third color if you wanted yeah. to do the border differently. So, uh, and it's really fun because it's completely reversible. As Melissa said, you can yeah. wear it one side or the other side depending yeah. on your mood. And uh, it's just two sides equal. Yeah. Perfect. So that's uh, one of our... Okay. That's in the... Okay. So this is one. This is a Lizzie. This is by Julie. The pattern is by Coconuts, Julie Weisenberger. And we actually saw Julie wearing a version of this at the H&H &H trade show yeah. in Mayak Cologne. Lace. In Mayak Lace, exactly. And she was wearing the kind of, I think in the mustard color. She way, was wearing right? in the was mustard. So, and we're like, so we called oh. the store immediately and said, you guys, cast on. <laughs> cast on and one of the Is this the night flower now, Melissa? Or no? Yes. Yeah, it is, eh? Yes. So I don't know if, I mean, all of you, well, not all of you, but many of you will be familiar with Liz, uh, the Lizzie. With, you, with the Lizzie, because I knit one last year in, the, in the Acadia from uh, the Fiber Company. But this is done in... Um, in a lace weight, mm -hmm. and I was I was concerned that it would just it's single stranded. Yeah, it's not double stranded at all, and I was worried that it was going to be too airy. But that that lace, that Mayak lace, yeah. just uh, it really fills it and blooms fills. and fills it, all the holes. And of course, what I I started to talk about Julie Weisenberger's beautiful construction, mm. the tailoring, and it's on the shoulders. It's very light. It's so light. It's very light. And that's so what uh, Julie light. does a lot of patterns where you can use so many different yarns yeah. and get a beautiful effect. Result. So, yeah, result. So she'll have one. It can be dense, it can be airy, yeah. it can be light, She heavy. does things with habu and then she'll, yeah. you know, she'll use a habu lace weight fingering weight and then she'll redo it in a wool that's, you know, a DK. Yeah. For example. Anyway, I think this is, I think this is stunning. Yeah, it's really nice. So t-shirt over a t-shirt over a tank. It's yeah. just, it's, it's like, it's like. Nothing. And this is like I was mentioning last time, you know, with all the air conditioning in the summer, this is a, a very light um, uh, cardigan that you can just throw in your bag because it's so light and thin. You just throw it in your bag. And when I get to the grocery store, I just either pull out a shawl or I have these little cardigans like that and just put them over me. So. And it is a lace weight, but it's actually knit using a four and a half millimeter needle and it just took two skeins. So really, it's a yeah, beautiful. That's really, uh, I know. That's the thing with lace weight. I really I love knitting far, with lace right? weight because yeah. it goes really far. Yeah. And also I like that light and airy feeling. Yeah. And you have the warmth without the heaviness. Yeah. So what's next? What's next? What next are we talking about? So we Lizzie? have uh, the Lizzie and the, the Gao Cow. Okay. This is our last store Oops. sample. I'm gonna lose stuff here. Here, Lise, mm -hmm. you wanna? I'll, I'll grab the kits. So we, um, it was really fun when we went to H&H &H and we were with Paula at the Mayak booth and uh, she had all these popping colors in cashmere. And I was like, oh my God, how fun is that? Because we do like a pop of color. Yeah, because she has beautiful colors in her regular mm -hmm. Mayak medium, but the pop colors are only done in the cashmere. Yeah. That the super bright sort of neons. So this is a kits that we created. It's called the Gao Cow by Michelle Wong. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a Mayak medium mixed with a cashmere medium yarn that is only available, I think, uh, it's not available everywhere. It's not a uh, yarn that's easily no, uh, just accessible. just in a couple of stores, I think. Mm -hmm. And so... We chose three colorways. We chose three colorways and made kits. And so that's your version with the blue. So the pattern, the picture on the cover of the pattern is of a double loop. We just decided to do the single loop. So there's enough yarn in each of these kits to do the single loop. So you saw mm -hmm. the brown with the mm -hmm. pink. And here's the kit. We the chartreuse mm -hmm. and that's um black well, it's kind of a dark like a brown. chalk like yeah. ebony yes ebony. exactly which is really fun so there's a few of those kids left i yep. think mm -hmm. So and those, those are we, and we still store. have some uh, samples that people are working on. So at yes. our next podcast, we'll uh, we'll have, have those for you. Samples. So yeah. what we decided to do was, you know, we talked about wanting to share summer samples with you this year, and we have so many, and we're just like, oh my god, this yeah. is too much. So we decided to do a yeah. little focus. We're going to focus on two yarns, uh, Petit Lain Plus mm -hmm. and Quince Sparrow. So we have quite a few samples in those, and then we have a few miscellaneous ones that we'd yeah. like to share with you. To I give mean, you we have those more summer samples in store, but I think what we'll do is spread them over a couple of podcasts. Yes. So yes. next podcast will come and it won't be so ones. overwhelming because you're going to yeah. want to knit everything <laughs> yeah exactly so there's the we'll start with the petit lin uh, plus and that's our espacico yarn so here melissa you want to talk about that one well this one you knit lee so you yes. should talk about it because well, i don't know this is a heidi kiermeyer pattern and it's called the sunshine coast and i know that you knit it and i mm -hmm. know that it took um three 
gains, which seems like not very much. I know, it's quite crazy that you could get a medium sized sweater out of three skeins. So that's pretty good. And what I what I love, you know. Is this the Ligne Orange? Ligne Orange, Orange yes, which is uh, the metro line in Montreal. Yeah. Uh, and one of the metro lines. And what's really nice here is the detail. So again, it's like a nice, just simple shape, but it has these eyelets down here on the side. And also look at the, okay, can you turn it to the side a little bit, Lisa? I just yeah. want, oops. Oh, this side? Yeah. <laughs> just because it has such a. Yes, here, nice. the, the diagonal, yeah. the bias, which is really cool. Look at that. Just so, you know, so Heidi pretty. is an engineer Yeah. in her previous life. So you can really tell by her designs there's that, you know, structure. So I really like this. It's I wore this with a with a white skirt, with a linen yeah, pants. Yeah, you wore that quite a bit last yeah, year. Did you I take did it on that. holiday? I feel like you, uh, or yeah. did you finish it after? I can't remember, but I did yeah. wear it quite a bit, so Maybe I really enjoyed that. Maybe you on holiday. Yeah, I think I was. Yeah. So that's really a nice one in, in Petit Lain, and it doesn't take too many skeins. And then this one is a one skein project. Yeah, this one was, uh, oh my goodness, I knit this one last spring. I'm trying to remember oh the Eileen bag let me <laughs> let me just Thank look God at my tags, tags exactly right <laughs> and it was a one skein project and it's a you just sort of knit a square bottom if I recall correctly yes you start with mm -hmm. your bottom and then you pick up your stitches all the way around and you just get this mesh and it was so fun I remember knitting this last year yeah. and just being so happy to be knitting with a bright color and after that long depressing winter and it's great. It holds a ton. Super strong because yeah. it's linen yeah. and it stretches huge. So it's like, a, yeah, it's a great market bag. So you can knit like a whole bunch in different colors. Mm -hmm. I think I even talked about knitting a whole bunch in different yeah. colors. I talk a lot. <laughs> you all talk, no I action. Talk. Um, so these are two that we, we knit before we had oh, yeah. Petit Lain Plus. So this yeah. is, uh, we knit these in Euroflex, but we really think that they could also be, uh, be knit up in the Petit Lain Plus. Um, and uh, this one is... This is another great pattern by Julie Weisenberger of Coco Knits. Again, it uses her beautiful, whoops, <laughs> tailoring techniques on her mm -hmm. shoulders and seams. Um, she also has a great way of um, working your, yep. your open shoulder so you get a nice smooth, or open arm, so you get a nice smooth finish on your on your arm openings. And her neck as and, well, uh, Amelis. Yes. She has an amazing way of doing the neck yeah, so you don't so have those it, steps and, and it, it just kind of has a drape. Yeah, it basically is creating a smooth slope yeah. all the way around any openings, basically. And uh, and it's just finished with a garter mm -hmm. edge at the bottom. I mean, I think I knit this the first or second oh, year we yeah, were open. Oh, yeah, a long time ago. And it has stood the test of time. Yeah. This just... The linen it's just the gets better with summer time. And it's a great shape. Tank. Yeah. It's, it's a, a great bit A-line. It's and flattering then this too, on everybody. This is kind of cute too. And it just too. has a tiny bit of a waterfall yeah. feel there at the neck. So this is called the Gretel. And as Lisa said, it's knit with the um, Euroflax, Euroflax, but it would be perfect in the mm. Petit Lain Plus. And okay. then here's another one. It's called Slice of Linen. So it's interesting. You know, we have uh, three-quarter length... Um, uh, tops, we have t-shirts, we yeah. have tank tops, we have sort of in between a, a camisole and a, and, a sh and a sweater. So this is called a slice of linen and this one uh, it's basically a square and two rectangles put together. All sewn together. There, there's not even an increase or a decrease. Was it a three needle bind off here? I or? believe it was a three needle bind off. And this was Sarah who knit this for us. Yeah. From France, we miss Sarah. Oh, I know. She's, um, she, uh, she was, was from here Toulouse temporarily for and a she, year. Yeah. She worked for us and she knit this slice of linen. And uh, so again, it's fun. You can do it all in one color and yeah. just have the, uh, the detail here. And this one is by um, uh, Susan Barstein. And so you could do it all in one color. You could just do two colors um, as you wish. You can wear it back to front. It's uh, reversible, just like our double take tee. Yeah. So that's uh, a good one as well. Okay. So that's uh, those are our patterns for the Petit Lain Plus. And we have okay. so many colors. Like what, what we really, when we, yeah, when we, we should have brought the rack I mean, over. When we chose to, um, to uh, to have this as our as our um, as our yarn, we really just the we colors. a lot of summer bright summer. They're just, Look. I mean, so fun. Yeah. So this is the Petit Lain Plus. So we've talked about our line of linens before, but we have the Petit Lain Plus and the Petit Lain. Petit Lain Plus is more of a sport weight, and the Petit Lain 
Petit Lang is um, a lace weight. Mm -hmm. So we have, we're actually working up a, a pattern that Mona had designed for us mm -hmm. called the Ombre Tank. Tank. Yeah. She did that a few years ago, and it was originally done in, also in a habu yarn, but we're re-imagining um, it with the petit lin as well. And so it's, it's going to be so, it's double stranded, so it's going to be marled and it's going to be fiery. Mm. It's we've got hot pink, we've got <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah, it's mustard really mustard and, and yeah. like a beige. It's, no, it's, really it's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're really big so we'll proponents show of week. linen in the summer. It's oh yeah. Really, uh, you know, I think before, you know, summer knitting was, you know, some cottons, acrylics, or people didn't knit as much. But yeah. now there's just too many beautiful linens and cottons and blends that uh, we can't get enough of it. Exactly. So, uh, okay. So we, don't, so we don't stop knitting, right? No, just because never. Because it's warm out. Never, never, never. Okay, so now we'll move on to um, Sparrow. Yeah. So we love Sparrow. So it's a yarn by Quince. Here, Melissa, do you want to grab some, some of the okay. Sparrow to show? I'm just gra grabbing random colors here. So it's 100% organic linen. Here's some from Italy. From Italy. And uh, this is a tried and true, yeah. right? Yeah. We love this. We and it's a little bit Sparrow. different. It's different than our linen in the sense that it's, uh, I would say it's a little bit thicker. Yeah, and I call it, it's like a little bit. more rope-like, I call yeah, it. Yeah, I would say so. A little heavier. A little heavier, yeah. for sure. Anyway, very pretty. So we did, um, uh, and we've had this longer than we've had our, our Petit Lane, our Petit Lane mm -hmm. Plus. And uh, I knit the Westbourne by uh, Isabel Kramer. Some more colors. Yeah. Oops, sorry, Melissa. No, go ahead. So this is uh, a nautical inspired uh, top. Again, th I really like three quarter sleeves in the summer, but I mean, with sleeves, we were having this discussion. Yeah. You can make them shorter, you can make them longer. Yeah. It's really up to your uh, discretion. And then I like, you know, I wear a, a, a camisole under here and I like the wide boat neck. So this Westbourne is really, really nice. It's just, linen just, lay, it just drapes yeah. so beautifully. It's, it's just, such a beautiful uh, and it just, fabric. it's just sort of, skims your body right yes exactly it doesn't I mean, have we encourage doesn't... you to really knit your summer knits loose you mm. don't want body conscious clingy stuff you want to be flowing to like flowing running along and... the beach right <laughs> or running out of the grocery store or you know <laughs> sipping wine or in, sipping in, wine on in, a uh, yes in toscana maybe <laughs> in italy <laughs> That's the column that you did. This, you, no, did you I didn't get this no, one, but this is also done Sasha with Sasha knit that one, I think. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And so this was uh, part of the Noir. Quince's Noir collection. I yeah. think it was called the Noir collection. I think it was. Yeah. Last summer. And I had done the, uh, the sweater with the kestrel. Mm -hmm. And this was the one done with Sparrow, which was a fingering weight. So again, just a really pretty tee. I don't, I don't remember much about this. How is this is by was Isabel made. Kramer as well. It is? Yes, for Quince. It was in the Quince collection, but oh, Isabel Kramer was a designer. Remember. Okay, yeah. it's funny. I didn't. I didn't remember that at no. all. Well, I just checked it yeah, out. Yeah. Okay. One. So that's, that's another another one from Sparrow. Um, yeah. And then this here, remember this one, the ship to shore. Oh was? yeah. So my my story. I don't know if I shared this story. Yeah, I think uh, you did. Actually. I did. Eh? Oh, maybe so, not. Maybe it was on one that never aired. Remember, we did that oh, one with the. Oh yes. We did this. Yeah, we did some things that never aired. Yeah. So this one is called the ship to shore, and it's by uh, Katie. Um, I think Rempe? it's Rempy, yes. Yeah. And uh, we met her actually at TNA, and she had done the original one was in Shibui linen, and uh, I mean it's just it's very very light. It's called Ship to Shore because uh, she designed this for a cruise that she was uh, mm -hmm. uh, teaching on, and uh, and it had to be it was like from ship to shore. Yeah. So it, had, it was something that had to be you can finished finish from from uh, by the time your your cruise yeah. is over. And so um, I That's remember great. Melissa and I were at the Shibui booth mm -hmm. and. Uh, and she ran in and she said, oh, can I take my shawl? Because she was going somewhere. And she grabbed it off the, the rack. And, and like, she put it around that? her. And she took her suitcase and she went out. I'm like, oh, I want that. I, I want to be that person. <laughs> so it's so interesting that sometimes it's an energy of, um, of a piece of a piece that inspires you. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I have to knit that. But at the time, we didn't have the Shibui Sorry, linen. So I did it in the Quince uh, Pebble. But the yeah. original one is the Shibui linen. Quince which Pebble. No, I always call that yarn pebble. Sparrow. Sparrow. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't I was know like, why. Is that something I don't remember? No. <laughs> Since we got that yarn in the store, oh, I really? call it pebble all the time. Funny. Quince Sparrow. Very funny. Um, but the original one is the, sh like I said, Shibui linen, which mm -hmm. now has been reimagined to become reed. Yes. So that's one you can also do in the Shibui reed, which we carry. Yeah. Well, speaking of reed, should I talk about this sample? Uh, yeah. Well, I just had one more for which the one? for the, the spring fling bag. Oh, yeah. 
That's our last one. Okay, and then you can move this on. one here. So here's a little bag that I designed because I wanted to be that person who just whisks the shawl <laughs> in with just, my little bag. It doesn't have anything to carry around. <laughs> Actually, my, the idea so of this bag. Your wallet and your phone. Your wallet, your phone, your keys, your agenda, your sunglasses. I've tested it. It all fits in there. Because it is, it is, there's a, yeah. there's a bottom. Yeah, so some people are surprised it. on how small it is. But, but it's we, two skeins, right? It's two skeins of Sparrow. And I, ha I did a bigger version called the Summer Fling, I think. This is the Spring Fling. Yeah. And then I have a Summer Fling. And um, I did a, a Kitchener um, uh, bind off. Or, yeah, yeah, so you Kitchener can't even stitch. see it. So, and it's just like a cute little summer bag. Because sometimes you just want to go out and you need a few things. And you don't want a heavy bag. It's like, you know, sometimes when you have a leather bag or yeah. it's heavy. So this is called the Little Spring Fling that I designed. And the Summer Fling is a larger version. Free pattern on Ravelry. <laughs> We should make kits. Info. We should. <laughs> we should. Now that we're all kitted up. Right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So miscellaneous, miscellaneous summer samples. Miscellaneous summer samples. Do you want to talk about that? Okay. One? So this one, just because we were talking about the Shibui Reed, mm -hmm. which is their um, linen yarn. So they've had, they had Shibui linen, uh, which is what this this pattern was originally knit with and it's called the Tayo Linear Top and originally I knit it with the Shibui linen combined with a strand of silk cloud. You guys, my addiction is long standing because <laughs> this is a few years old. Exactly. It is a great transitional piece because it it's very airy mm -hmm. but it does have that, that warmth from the mohair. It is very loosely knit and it's just knit as two rectangles, two long rectangles and you finish by just doing four seams. So there's mm -hmm. two longer seams across the top. You leave the opening for the neck and longer, uh, shorter seams here. So, mm -hmm. and you leave your opening for your Done. body, of course. And then you've just got a nice wide, wide sleeve. And it's very flattering. Mm. It's just throw it over a t-shirt, throw it over a tank, throw it over your, you know. And it, uh, the original one does not call for silk cloud. No, it's no. actually, it's called the Tayo Linear Top. And it was, uh, and it was really originally done just Noro. with a single strand of Noro Tayo. Yeah. So, so it's good to show uh, you'll see the, the original pattern and you can yeah. see how we've, uh, we've uh, interpreted it. Interpreted. That's a very nice way of putting cloud. it. <laughs> <laughs> so that one was, that one was fun and it's, it's flattering on everybody. You want to talk about that one? Sure. This is called the Leger Redux. So Mona had knit, uh, designed a pattern for us a couple of years ago called the Leger mm -hmm. and it was done with a slightly thicker yarn and we decided we, last year we got the... Zoe from Juniper mm -hmm. Moon, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a slightly thinner yarn. So Mona re-knit and redesigned the pattern. It's called the Leger Redux. And what we did was we modified the neckline. We took it in a little bit and we also took in the width of the sleeves a little bit. So this is again a, a free Espastico pattern. Are you getting some of the um, yarn, the uh, ball sleeves? Yeah. I was getting uh, something else. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't need to. I think it's kind of speaks for itself. It's a beautiful mix of cotton and linen. Yeah, so let's show a couple actually. Well, I'm choosing bright colors. I'm staying away I from know. the gray. Are we uh are we doing well with our holding things up to the uh, yes, let's hope so. Those are fun actually Aren't together. They? Well, maybe not together. <laughs> well, I don't know. If you're doing a kid's thing. <laughs> if you're doing a kid's thing. Or you're so doing 60 like sixty percent cotton and forty percent linen. You're doing some tablecloth. It's a tiny bit thick and thin. But yeah, it gives it a bit of that great, rustic. Yeah, it has a great texture. It reminds so. me of just like, you know, a beach cover up. Yeah. Too, you know, I mean, it, it's it's really nice to wear with jeans, with shorts, with anything, but also like over a bathing suit. Mm -hmm. It's really nice as well. Yeah, so Leger Redux. Free, mm -hmm. unraveler. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Okay, here is the, uh, a, I always call, I call, I mix up the, the I always call it, the Age brass of and Steam and Brass? It's Age of Steam and Brass. Yeah. I call it Brass and Steam, but anyway. Same diff. Same, same. So this is a pattern that we've done also in multiple yarns. Do you remember who it's by? Um, uh, did I not write that down? Oh, yeah. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I anyway, will, I believe you, it's a free pattern, right? Yes, it is a free pattern. You know what I liked about this? The, the Boneyard was a pattern that we uh, we suggested a lot for beginners um, in terms of um, um, like a top-down shawl, shawl mm -hmm. for their first sh triangle shawl. And then this one was just a step up because it has the eyelets and on the border you have to do yarn overs on the pearl side, which adds mm -hmm. a little complexity. So this was one that we, we recommended a lot for people who were sort of venturing in to uh, triangle shawls. Um, or who wanted to just uh, um, 
take their skill level up a little bit more. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just impressed with your ability to talk and type. <laughs> so it's Orange Flower Yarn okay. uh, is the designer, Orange Flower Yarn. So it is really an, an, a, a nice pattern. And this is different than the Boneyard in that the Boneyard is, this one is longer because mm -hmm. you do increases on the wrong side. Yeah. So you have a longer and a shallower point. Whereas the boneyard is a deeper point. It's your traditional four stitch increase on each side. So we did make um, some modifications, I think, in terms of the number of repeats. So all our all our details will be on our Ravelry mm -hmm. project page. And I should have mentioned that also about the the Tayo Linear top. Yes. I think I did an extra repeat or two, but again, yeah. all our details are on our Ravelry yes. project page. Everything that we show you mm -hmm. has a project page on Ravelry. You can go and find out uh, everything about it. So we also, we don't mention it enough, but I also do show notes for every single mm. one of our podcasts mm -hmm. on our Ravelry discussion group. There's always a link from in the down bar and I will have links to every single one of the projects that we talk about if we've knit it and it's one and of ours. And pictures sometimes and pictures too, usually, which yeah. is great. So, so what, this takes two cones of this. So this, silk. and I explained that if you wanted to just, if you just did a few less rows, you could get away with one cone, mm -hmm. uh, if not two cones, and you can even make it bigger. And this shawl weighs nothing. Yeah. It's super, super light. And it's made with uh, Tsumugi silk from Habu, which is 100% silk. It's mm -hmm. more of a, it's not a shiny silk. It's uh, more of a raw silk. Yeah. Um, and quite thin. And so I just brought over, it comes in a cone. So if those of you, you might feel that, oh, I've never knit with something from yeah. a cone. So we have lots of beautiful colors. And like Melissa said, two skeins and you can uh, make um, two cones and you can make our size. And just one, one trick for people who are working with cones is that we like to keep them on the floor below us mm -hmm. because if you keep them on the table they, they keep just fall all over so um uh, we just keep them on the and floor and it just pulls off the top. it just pulls up really yeah. easily and they and it's so nice because they don't fall apart yeah and they store really nicely in your project bag so, so now we have mm. a couple of bags to talk yes. about so i think this is one of the very first mm. things that i knit after we opened our store no before we opened before the store because we, we bought the, the yarn at eleanor's this we is, both knit the same one yeah this is a pattern by heidi kiermeyer called the medano beach bag it was it's a free, free pattern, pattern. Uh, it was it was just so fun. I, I remember was. just loving it. It was it was so. I think she did it as a it was a solid color, wasn't? No, no, it was striped. No, it was, it was striped. exactly like this. So it was uh, again a square bottom that you pick up stitches, you knit up, and what was great that it had. Uh, a tie okay. that you could sort of make off center. You could tie it sort of so that it wasn't sitting right up on your shoulder. You could have it to the front or the back so that it was very comfortable to wear. And the shape goes, she does some increases. Yeah. So it's like a baluchon. I, it seems to me we've talked guess, about this the before. Bottom, right? No, because you, you, in, you oh, pick yeah. up and then you increase, increase and, then and then you decrease. In. And then she, she brings this in. It's really well design pattern because it's not just a straight up. Like she, she, she reinforces over here mm -hmm. and brings it in. So it's a... It's nice. You, you learn some nice techniques and you can make the straps as long as you want. So it can be a, a cross body and a shoulder bag, you know, it's very versatile. Yeah. And so I had knit this back in the day with the All Hemp 6 Lux, which is from um, Hemp for Knitting. Mm -hmm. And what was nice about the All Hemp 6 Lux as opposed to the All Hemp 6 oh, was that it was kind of pre-washed. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was soft. I mean, hemp isn't always the, the softest, you know, these hemps and linens and cottons aren't always the softest, most comfortable yarns to knit with. But this one was pre-washed, so it was really painless. It was nice. And when you're when you're with. working with with um, when you're making bags, mm -hmm. you know, or baskets, you really want a tighter gauge, yeah. right? So it, it can hurt your hands too, you know, after a yeah. while. But it's really worth it in the end. So these are all the colors we have left. It's not a huge selection. Um, we are, we've been carrying all hemp six lux almost since we opened. So we have, we're trying some, some different linens and cottons at the moment, but we do, do still have some of this. So you can knit your pattern, you can knit your bag with that. But as an and alternative, I just, I'm just going to add that it's two skeins of two yeah. colors. So you can either do it all one color, yeah. um, or you can do the base one color, this another color, or if you want the stripes, it's two skeins of two colors. So we do yeah. have a few colors left. And I was thinking like, you know, that would kind yeah, of, that would be fun. That would be fun. Um, you can also do that. Yeah. That would be a nice combination as well. 
And then this. You know, tube. I think I have a lot of this stashed. Maybe I should bring <laughs> in the cream and black I have at home. <laughs> I love this yarn. And then you have that too. So yeah, yeah that's you, a nice combination. Yeah, actually. so you can still yeah. have some. We only have two skeins of this, oh, so someone oh, in the nabs fast. it exactly. So as you mentioned, Melissa, we were thinking of alternatives. Oh for yeah. This. So I think originally, what did she actually design it with? Do you remember what was uh, it? Cotton? A uh, DK weight. It cotton, was. A, right? It was a few different suggestions. Okay. If, uh, let me just look at that. Medina. So we carry the butterfly super ten cotton which would be a great um alternative for that so she's she has hemp for knitting uh Beaumoulin from garn studio euroflex mm -hmm. drops and if you look at yarn ideals on the pattern quite a few people have done it uh in the uh, butterfly super 10. yeah and it's beautiful and we actually so, saw and, one and it, would it just be one of each then lise uh i or think so because this has this has quite yardage. a lot quite a lot of uh, yardage so I have a feeling it might be one of each and what we saw somebody this is 130 meters and this and one this is 230 is so you might still have to do two of each depending. I don't know I think we had some left over yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I had made remember. the same bag as Melissa but I used the um, cotton right? the cotton linen from the creative focus yeah cotton linen from Rowan yeah um, so it worked equally as well in in the cotton yarn and I saw somebody on um, Ravelry did a project with these two colors and then added an accent of this it's not uh, so obvious the color on the, ba the bottom of the bag yeah on the bottom there. it's a coral yeah. so it was really fun I'm like oh isn't that fun so you can even mm -hmm. add three colors in rather than having yeah. to if you have to dip into right. second skin might right. as well get a third color yeah that's fun so that's and a then fun one bag. Other bag that we did oh this was also one of our early bags yes that we I knit this one I think in the in our second year I think so I think I had a thing for Mark bags and <laughs> that was one of so, our summer knit alongs that yeah we had done. and it was a um it's actually done with a round bottom instead mm -hmm. so you start in the center and you work out and then you just work up and it's dropped stitches it was a, a pattern by knitted shoulder bag i think by kurtzer for the s123 yes something uh, like right that. here it's called now that company is no longer in business and that pattern is no longer available online however if you order it and you let us know that that's what you want to make then we can certainly include the pattern yes because for you. it was a free pattern yeah. uh, but the company is no longer here so just write if you place an order online just leave us a note that you would like the the Kurtz or shoulder bag pattern and um a little uh, throw it in there for you in there mm -hmm. okay and it, you know it's fun to knit bags it's it different is. you know it is and you have your nice and they're functional little... and you'll use them yes exactly if you don't have a store to hang them in all the time <laughs> So I think that's, uh, we've gone through our miscellaneous summer Maybe. samples. Okay. And then we just have you, the works that we're just, are we going to just talk our about works in works progress? progress? Yeah, or? we should talk about our works in progress. I don't have much to say, but I did, I did cast one on this weekend that mm -hmm. I'm, that I'm having fun this with. This one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll just talk, uh, because we're on the topic of summer yarns, the Petit Lamp Plus, the Espastrico Petit Lamp Plus, I've been knitting the Hayward. I find this color is just... I don't know. It's really there's something bright about I know. it. No, it because it's brightly. It's because we're not used to. <laughs> like what a novel color! Yeah, it's I so know. original. <laughs> Again, you guys, my third Hayward in the works, and this time I I'm doing it in linen. Oh look, I'm I'm in the middle of a row, which is bad. Can anyway, I help I've you knit. With something, uh, not really. I've done the bottom, okay. and I finished the front, and I've just started knitting up the back. And that'll be pretty quick. I can do that in a couple of days, and then I'll do the sleeves and sew it all together. So hopefully by the next podcast, I'll be oh, for I'll sure be you'll be that. done that. Yeah, for sure. So not too much to show until it's finished. Now, you will you will notice that it's looking not too bad. Linen doesn't really look like this when no. you knit it. I have given she this a She deceives steam. people. Yeah. It, it really looks a lot more sort of crumply and messy. I like to say your dog's And a bit breakfast. depressing. <laughs> yeah, it does. And, and so... When I initially, when I had done a little bit of this and I and I started giving it a little bit of a steam, I took some pictures of the process, just four pictures to show you what I was doing, and I Instagrammed. So if you want to get mm -hmm. a sense of how I steam block that, then go and check out our Instagram. Mm -hmm. I know we talk a lot about doing I tutorials. Know. We're going to get there. We will get there. We will get there. And trust Video me, by tutorials. the time we get there, it'll be well worth the wait. <laughs> oh, they'll be so good. <laughs> Right? I mean, hallelujah, revolutionary. <sighs> it's so, getting really hot in here, Elise. I, Are you hot? I'm dying. We're is almost it, done. We're almost outside? Done. Is it menopause? What is it? <laughs> What's this idea? We got this sample. We got this yeah. sample. We got this sample, you know? Oh, my God. Right. I think, too, I'm just sort of thinking of all that knitting we did to create all those samples. I know. Okay. Um, 
So yeah. my last, but I think I talked about this a yes. uh, little bit, so I'm not going to talk about it again because I haven't done much more since, but the boho blush I'm working on in the Julia Asselin. If you know, in the Adelaide colorway, which I love, we keep ordering it. It keeps mm -hmm. selling out. Keep ordering more. So we will keep ordering more. And then the last thing I, mm -hmm. did I bring the pattern lace? Well, you printed it. Oh, did you print it? No, you just looked at it. No, no, I printed, you printed it. it. Here it is. Exactly. Okay. So the, uh, what I'm doing is It is, is called, a... first of all, it's called Knitted Japanese Tote Bag. Okay. The Knitted Japanese Tote Bag. And I was really in the mood for an immediate gratification project on Friday, which I really thought would be an immediate gratification project. And it is if you don't drink it every terrace yeah, on the weekend. Exactly. So You know it, what? It I just want to say, when I moved to my new neighborhood, yeah. I, I moved in April, yeah. and I did that until September. Yeah. Exactly that. And I gained a few pounds. <laughs> and now you move back into the neighborhood, yeah. and you and Johannes are We're just hitting all the... It's like, the... tu apprivoises ton exactly. quartier. You know, you're getting familiar with all the, right. the people and the environment. You know, well, it's part it, of it. It's, it's our... It's, it's always been our Cartier, but we, we're you know, reacquainting. Yes. yes. You know, things change in three years. That's unless, true. That's three, true. Four years. four years. Anyway, all that to say that I didn't get as far as I wanted to get. It could just be a table, like a napron. Yeah. You say that. Please, yeah. man. It's going to be not, a bag. It will be a bag. So you really, it's dead simple, you guys. You knit a rectangle, and then you fold it origami style. <laughs> That's the hard part. Right? And I, I'll just show you this briefly, but it becomes a bag. It becomes this bag. It's like making dumplings, and then you fold them. And, and I also have the ba the handles, the oh, jewel. I, I saw them. Oh, yeah. there they are. Oh, here we go. Okay. So we have these leather handles from Jewel and what's so great about them is like her closures they're screw on screw off so they come in pairs but what I'm thinking of doing is if there's interest in this bag because it's the it uses one skein of the Bernat home deck cotton mm -hmm. and if there's interest in the bag then and the bag only requires one handle then maybe we'll create kits which would reduce the cost mm. dramatically of buying yep. a pair right so and, and these, these are, are the, the great screw on that uh, handles that you yeah. can take them off to wash your bag. You take them off to wash your to bag or put them on another mm -hmm. bag if you do want a diff different color. So once I get it all together, then It'll that will be, be my strap. So That's stay yeah. tuned. Hopefully I'll have this done by the end of the week. So yeah, we'll have pictures course. on Instagram and um, we'll see. So if there's interest, then we can create some, we can create some mm. kits so people can just... And you know, just like that, Bernat, cotton has been amazing, eh, Melissa? Yeah, because that's what you, you crochet yeah, all your baskets with, right? Show. I have a couple yeah. of baskets here, and, and uh, it's so funny, because we, we owe it to Mona, you know? She, yeah, she's the one who encouraged us to bring that Christmas, in. And it was last Christmas, I ran to Michael's. Yeah. On Christmas Oh, Eve. I remember that. Remember that, to buy yeah. some? Yeah. And uh, and we gave a workshop and it was really successful this weekend. On these th and these are the baskets that I made with that. Mona made me this one and then I went and made a little black one. And uh, the kids oh, you made, made a whole these. bunch of other ones. Did you oh yeah, you have a whole bunch of white ones at home. And then the kids at school made these for their fair. And and I mean, there's so many different sizes. I mean, this is all I can do in crochet. I can only crochet baskets. <laughs> well, what you can do, you can increase. Well, yeah, I can crochet a basket, but don't ask turn, me. Turning row. I can turn and then I can go. go but don't ask me to crochet a square. I have no idea. So um, with that Bernat cotton, you can do yeah. this. You're yep. doing the bag. Yeah. Francoise did the washcloth, yeah. you know, for the démaquillant. Oh, anything. I mean, anything. Cotton. It's a really it's a nice great, cotton. I have to say it's really sturdy and it's really good. It's really good for bags. Yeah, I really like this cotton. Yeah. So anyways, it's it has a, a little thick... stretch to it. So it's yeah. not it's not like knitting with a really, you know, like how a cotton harsh. doesn't have a lot of give. Yeah. But because of the way it's constructed, it does have stretch. Mhm. Mm which makes it a bit easier to yeah. crochet with when you're doing when you're going tight. Yeah. Anyway, so, so that's that's a great little cotton. Yeah. Well, big cotton, not little cotton. Yeah, it is a big. So this bag is actually knit on a six millimeter needle, so it really won't take long. Okay, Lisa, so, are you talking well, about? Well, your... I'm just going to talk because I have my original design, that lace parallelogram that oh, I'm yeah. doing in the blacker uh, BFL lace. Mm -hmm. So I'm I put that aside to finish my new pattern. So okay. I'm going to go back to that, and then I have my rose cardigan, and we're working with Annie from knitting it up to source some yarn and find some, some yarn for that, create right? some kits for that. So we're because working we can't on that. get that particular yarn. No, from... unfortunately, we'd love to. If it ever becomes available, we're on it. It's by it's the yarn that Lisa has is the La Bienname Sport yarn kit. Right. 
so uh so i'm working on those and now i'm gonna get back to those so that's yeah. that's it for now okay and uh products so there's just a couple of things well first of all we want to say the people at kohana are so cute they are so they uh we placed another order after our last podcast yeah. we sold so much kohana we, we placed a third order <laughs> our already, third right? order and uh, when we sent the email in um uh the, the people from kohana sent us an email and said wow your customers really like kohana <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you, you so much you sell a lot of kohana you they sell said a lot <laughs> so uh and they watched our podcast and they were oh, yeah, so appreciative were, and yeah. uh and it's really nice because when you work with uh with with smaller companies and ateliers and handicraft uh, craftsmen it's so nice that you know it's like we're a big community and and yeah. we're we love their products and we want to promote them so we've actually placed another kohana order which we should be which getting should, this yeah, week should be, it'll be up before the podcast yeah. goes so we're sold sure. out of canvas totes and the little knickknack bags and a lot of the scissors mm-hmm. so we're going to be uh, replacing that and uh uh, we also got the knit kit. Yeah. yeah, here. So we have we have two two colors in stock right now. I believe it's a pink that's coming, right? Yes. So the I think it was back ordered. Many of you are the the knit kit's been on on the market for a couple of years now, mm-hmm. and every year they come out with new colors. Mm-hmm. It's I a think new it's owner under now. New ownership though. now. Yes. They they stopped for a year or so, mm-hmm. and now it's under new ownership. And so what's what's nice about the knit kit is it contains everything that you need in terms of notions and scissors mm-hmm. and a crochet hook and a measuring tape and a counter and needle gauge. It's a crochet great hook. thing for traveling because everything in here can be taken on a plane and you are, and it even has stoppers and a darning needle, everything you need. I know, and stitch it also mar- has opening and closing stitch markers. Scissors, scissors that fold. Yeah. And then uh, measuring, um, for a needle gauge yeah. to measure your needles. And then there's even a little yarn cutter over here. And it, oh, and a row counter. And did you show the- um, Yes, measuring tape. The measuring tape? So That's I so mean, great. it's like just, it's so easy. It's compact, you, you throw, throw it in, in bag. bag. Fantastic for travel. Knit the kit. knit kit. Get it while it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> the knit kit. So that's um, so I think that's it. No, no, I just want to talk about oh, yeah. soak. So um, we we use uh, obviously we hand wash a lot of our garments and um, the in the when when there's wools we always use um, uh, eucalyn because there's the lanolin in it and whenever I I knit or Melissa knits with uh, linens or silks or cotton we always go to soak. Mm-hmm. So you can still use soak for your wools Absolutely. but it doesn't have the lanolin and we just love soak. So right now I'm loving the fig humulus. I am a diehard lover of, of yuzu, yuzu, but yeah. I've also purchased the fig. Purchased. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now I'm thinking and of scentless. trying. Is that the scentless? Yeah. Uh, I just gave the fig to my mother. She was visiting this oh, weekend, yeah. and um, but I might try. There's celebration. This is celebration. So we have we have fig scentless yuzu uh, celebration, and we also have little travel bottles. Yeah. But I have to say, uh, it's better. It's yeah, cheaper it's to economical. buy a big one and then just take a little bottle and fill it up. Uh, I take this when I travel, yeah. um, and this is really great. And you can even if you uh, put things in your washing machine because linens and cons, a lot yeah. of them you can machine wash. You can use that. So this is a really have good. Have you put so, that in your washing machine? I've never put it in but you can apparently yeah really yeah you okay. also you can put in your washing machine my sister does you in her washing yeah. machine but i've never and tried you can put uh, this and sure. my sister-in-law okay. uses so you, this would you put it in sort of the same amount roughly that you uh, would... uh no i you i think you put in like well you have to put more in so okay. it's usually like a quarter of a cup okay when you do a when you do a load so you want to wash a lot of things yeah. uh, the so thing about just... the thing about soak is that it is a very mild detergent and so it's really about the soaking and mm-hmm. not about the agitation and so it's perfect for hand knits and delicates and it's also rinseless you don't need to rinse it yes. afterwards you just drain it I, I always rinse just anyway, like a quick little rinse little but quick little rinse but you don't have to worry about a lot of suds. residue being left yes suds and the residue being left exactly your... and it's biodegradable mm-hmm. phosphate free and dye free mm-hmm. so it and you just a little bit you know you just put like a teaspoon which is like a cap full and a gallon yeah. of water and it works super well so we we these are products we've been using since before yeah. we had the store yeah and that's Canadian company, uh huh, which is out nice. of Toronto, I think, or Mississauga, or something. Somewhere in Ontario. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. In Ontario. So we're, uh, we, it's nice. It's fun when we can find Canadian. You know, us Canadians, we like to say things from Canada. <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> So I think that's it. I Ladies. think Whew. we've come to the end of our infomercial. Oh my god, we're done. We're done. Is it really only a minute and? I mean, a minute. Was that really only a minute and 16 seconds? <laughs> New bag. <laughs> I thought it was a, an hour and 51 minutes. No, we we've you. done well. Maybe, I don't know if we had a first part and we stopped. Oh. Keep up. Okay, so that was actually, we covered a lot. Yeah, we and did. So I'm okay. glad that we had the energy to stick to the end and thank yes. you for sticking with us. I should put some outtakes in of, of the. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> we, we recovered few, well. We had a few starts. We had a few starts. We did, but we recovered yeah, well. Yeah, we did okay. Yeah, we're feeling a little giddy right now. Maybe we'll go We're tired. A, maybe we should go to a tech house Maybe after we should this. go have a drink and reward ourselves. Yay. Yes. Okay. No, I should go edit. <laughs> oh, that can wait till tomorrow. Yeah, it's gonna have to wait. Yeah. So thank anyway. you so much for following us. It's uh, always lots of fun too. Once we get started, uh, we get on a roll. We oh, think yeah. of the people we watching us and stuff. It, but then it's fine. Yeah, right? and then and we just get so much love back. So yeah. It's so wonderful. thank you everybody for tuning yes. in, and we'll see you next time. Yes. Have a great start to summer. Yes. Ciao, ciao, everyone. Bye. Bye.